Hey everyone. All right. Uh, last, last discussion uh, for this lecture is the central limit theorem. Uh, one of the most important theorems of all of statistics, the central limit theorem. Uh, this theorem describes the distribution of the sample mean as the sample size grows large. So uh, this is often when you're saying, this is often why people say uh, the sample mean is approximately normal when the sample size uh, for large sample sizes. So, uh, what the theorem says is that if you have observ if you have data x i and it has a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, uh, suppose you have you're you're computing the sample mean x bar, which equals one over n, the sum from i equals one to n x i, then the sample means approximate distribution as the sample size goes to infinity will be the normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, which basically says that if you have a mean and you have a standard deviation, then regardless of whatever the original distribution of the data was, the distribution of the sample mean becomes the normal distribution. And the sample mean starts to forget, in a sense, the original distribution of the data. So we can actually demonstrate the central limit theorem in R. Uh, we're going to work with uh, exponential random variables uh, with a mean parameter five. So the mean is gonna be five and the standard deviation is going to be five. And if that's the case, then according to the central limit theorem, the sample mean should have an approximately normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation five over the square root of n as n grows large. So what we're going to do is use R's random number generation. Uh, what we're doing here, some people call call it Monte Carlo simulation. I just call it uh, simulation. Uh, we're going to generate random sample means and uh, look at their distribution. Look at the distribution of those sample means and see if they start to resemble a normal distribution. So let's consider the sample size, uh, samples of size 10, 50, 200, and 1,000. 10 may or may not be large. I would say that most uh, statisticians would not consider a sample size of 10 to be large. 50 is large-ish, 200 is large, and 1,000 is very large. So if we don't see some normal type behavior at a sample size of 1,000, then, well, something's wrong. So we're going to generate, for each of these experiments, we have, uh, okay, so we have actually a couple uh, sample sizes going on. We have the sample size of the data from which we compute the mean, and we have how many means we're computing this way. Uh, so we're going to generate 200 simulated means for each of these sample sizes. So to construct these means, uh, I'm going to loop over uh, the potential sample sizes um, actually, why is it, hmm, I'm wondering if I was, uh, considering, why is this not looking at, that's weird, that's weird. I say I was looking at 10, 50, 200, and 1,000, but in here I have 5, 10, 20, and 50. You know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I don't I don't think I actually really care because um I'm guessing that at one point in time I just didn't change these notes and I had 10 50 200 and 1000 and I discovered uh it's actually like for illustration purposes it's not working out very well so I'm guessing that I wonder what I have here uh 5 10 20 and 50 so I guess I lied I'm a I'm a total liar about what sample sizes we're we're looking at so Five is definitely not large. 10 is not really large. 20 is kind of large. 50 is large enough. And by 50, we should be seeing some normal type behavior. So, uh, all this uh, comments. This is the reason why you should... Don't get too gung-ho about comments. Sometimes they make your code harder to read. So, I just deleted those comments. Uh, here's what we're doing in our loop. So, remember in a previous lecture, we were talking about these apply functions... So this is going to loop over the numbers 5, 10, 20, and 50, plug each of those into function n as n. Uh, so these will become what n is. And then we're going to simulate a data set. Uh, we're going to do this 200 times. 
we're going to store it in a list because this is L apply. Um, this also is a list. So we're storing our stuff in lists because we're using L apply. So we have a function. Uh, the parameter for that function is a parameter called throwaway, which is just, I came up with a name. I could have called this anything. And I called it throwaway to make it very clear to you guys that I am not using this. All right, this is this, like a parameter needs, to, it's going to be passing the numbers one, two, three, four, five into this function and I don't care. All I wanna do is create random observations and I don't need one, two, three, four, five, and so on. I don't need that. All I wanna do is just repeat something 200 times. So what I do is I uh, create Sorry about that. Uh, what I do is I create um, uh, random exponential uh, observations. I'm creating n of them, and here is the mean of this data set. And I'm going to do this 200 times, and then after I have that, I'm going to compute the mean. There's going to be 200. There's going to be a list with 200 data sets in it, and for each of those data sets, I'm going to compute the mean. So that's what this part means. Uh, this right here is just looking at the structure of that data set. Let's, let's go ahead and run this part. All right. And, uh, here's the structure of the resulting thing. These are means. So there's 200 means for each of these groups. Uh, that should be part of a comment. Um, and then I'm going to, uh, plot, I'm going to make density plots of each of these, uh, groups. So, um, well, let's just see what happens here. So I made a density plot when uh, for the group uh, for the sample means when the sample size was a uh, five, and you can look through the parameters. I'm just setting some parameters like colors, uh, labels, um, all that stuff. So uh, this is what this is a density estimate for um, an an an, exp an exponential distribution with parameter five, and then I'm going to start putting on those means so here i added a line to the data set that corresponds to that first set of means when the sample size is five uh, then i increase it to 10 then i increase to 20 and then i go to 100 and it's kind of hard to see just due to some artifacts uh, in uh, how this thing's being created but i'm also going to superimpose a normal distribution that red line doesn't look too far away from the black line, except for that little kind of dip part, uh, which is unfortunate, but it is, except for that one part, everywhere else, it's actually looking pretty similar to the corresponding normal distribution. So this is basically an R implementation of a, a demonstration of the central limit theorem. I've actually got a Galton board, a real Galton board that you hold in your hands. Uh, and in the lecture videos, I'm hoping to show people the Galton board and because I like, as nice as the R software is, it's software, it's on a computer, it isn't necessarily real. Uh, but I will, I really like a Galton board, a good old fashioned physical Galton board that you flip over and beads fall down uh, to show that the central limit theorem is a real thing. Uh, the central limit theorem is probably my, I mean, it is my favorite theorem in statistics and I think it's most people's. <laughs> I, like, if you're a mathematical statistician, I can't imagine your favorite theorem not being the central limit theorem because it's so powerful and it's so useful. I remember a hearing um, in some uh, TED talk a um, a mathematician who won the highest uh, uh, honor, the, the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in mathematics. Um, I can't remember what it's called. And he said... Uh, that if the ancient Greeks were aware of the normal distribution, they would worship it like a god. And one reason is results like the central limit theorem. Uh, I should have, yeah. So, all right, that's it. That's it for this lecture. Uh, and uh, I'll see you later.